Welcome. It's so good to be with you on this Wednesday as we get together for a little midweek Bible study and devotional time. And I'm so glad that you've taken some time out today to join us to do just that, whether it's on Wednesday or maybe it's another day. But we are glad, regardless of when it is, that you've taken some time out to to join us today and hopefully be uplifted as we dive into God's Word and uh, maybe learn some lessons for what He has for us and uh, hopefully be uplifted uh, by being together today. You know, one of the most popular Christian songs over the last couple of decades is a song by the band uh, called Mercy Me. It's a song called I Can Only Imagine. Some Many of you are probably familiar with that, or at least some of you. Um, it's a beautiful song, wonderful song, one of my favorite songs. Some of you maybe even seen the movie that uh, goes along with the, the song. The movie is by the same title and kind of tracks the band and uh, the lead singer of the band. And it's just this beautiful song that speaks to the hope that we have of heaven and the joy that we look forward to one day experiencing there when we stand in the glory of, of God's presence and uh, celebrate just being in his presence and what joy will overcome us during uh, during those moments. And, and while I love that song, and it's a beautiful song, uh, there's actually another song that Mercy Me sings that has become one of my favorites. And I like it better than I can only imagine, even though I love only, I can only imagine a lot. And it's a song by the name of uh, Even If. It's called Even If. And while I can only imagine, it speaks to the hope that we have of heaven one day. Uh, the song Even If really speaks to the struggle to hold on to that hope as we live here on earth. And as we deal with some of the things that we have to deal with, and how do we how do we wrap our minds around the goodness and faithfulness of God, and yet dealing with the things that we have to deal with, and and why God works and moves in certain ways, and and maybe why he he doesn't. And I think one of the reasons why I love that song, and why many others love that song, is it's it's so convicting and challenging to me uh, to think about that, and and to really dig into what kind of faith. Do I have and what? How do I view God and what? What are my thoughts about Him? And I won't go through all uh, the lyrics. I just wanted to read you the chorus. And don't worry, I'm not going to sing it. But I do want you to read the, or I want you to listen to the words of of the chorus. And the chorus goes like this. And and if you've heard the song and you're very familiar with this, but it says the chorus says, "I know you're able." Talking about God, I know you're able, God, and I know you can save through the fire with your mighty hand. But even if you don't, my hope is you alone. I know the sorrow and I know the hurt will all go away if you just say the word, but even if you don't, my hope is you alone. Reminds me of one of my favorite stories in the Bible, a story that we just actually talked about on Sunday as we're going through a series looking at the book of, of Daniel. Uh, and, and in the story that we looked at, the three friends that we looked at, had, had they had reasons to doubt God. I mean, they, they had been faithful to him, and yet they'd been taken as slaves to a foreign country. Their homeland had been destroyed. The history of their nation seemed to be coming to an end. And now, as we read in Daniel chapter 3, they are about to die. Or at least so it seemed. The king of the country where they found themselves had ordered them to be burned alive. Yes, you heard me right. Burned alive. This king, a man by the name of Nebuchadnezzar, had built this humongous statue honoring his favorite person, which would be himself. And it was just this massive statue made of gold, 90 feet high, 9 feet wide, just an enormous statue. And the king gave the order that whenever the royal, royal music was played, whenever certain music was played, then everybody had to bow down and worship this idol. But these three friends, you may know them as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, so many of you have probably heard this story, they refused to bow down and worship this statue. Their belief in the one true God wouldn't allow them to compromise and bow down to this idol, no matter what it might cost them. And so the king had them arrested, threatened to burn them alive in a huge furnace, but before having them executed, he offered them one more chance to worship, bow down and worship this gold image that he had made. That's when the three friends showed what kind of faith they had. And here's what they said. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If this be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But if not, We want you to know, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. They assured the king that they would not worship his idol. They also told him quite clearly, and might I add, quite respectfully, 
that their God was able to rescue them and that they believed he would do just that. But they also made it clear that their faith was in God even if he chose not to rescue them. You know, far too often we want to trust in God as long as he does what we want him to do and when we want him to do it and how we want him to do it. You know, just save my loved one, then I'll believe. Just get me out of this mess and I'll put my faith in you. Just do this for me and I will trust you. And certainly God is quite capable and able to heal and to rescue and to save, just as he did with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. If you know the end of the story, God does save them from the burning, fiery furnace. In fact, he meets them in the furnace. But like those three young men, we don't need a just and faith. We need an even if faith. We need the kind of faith that says, Lord, I'll trust you even if you don't do what I hope you'll do. Lord, I'll trust in you even if you don't answer this prayer the way I want. Lord, I will trust in you no matter what. There's a passage at the end of the book of Habakkuk that says, though the fig tree does not bud and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls. I mean, like what else could go wrong, basically? I know we don't relate as well to that language. Just think of everything that can go wrong will go wrong. Yet, Here's what Habakkuk says, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God, my Savior. We don't need a just and faith that comes and goes according to our circumstances. We need an even if faith that follows God and trusts in him no matter what. Because no matter what, he is good and he is faithful and he is worthy of our praise. And our hope is still in him alone. Hope you have a blessed day. God bless.